You know, I've got little short, stubby hands, so of course I'm going to have long nails. I'm short, so I wear high heels. And my hair don't do what I want it to, so I wear wigs. I can still have it all, even if it's fake. <laughs> Hi there, this is Dolly Parton, and this is the evolution of my look. I take any of the fashions that I like, I dollyize them. Gaudy, flamboyant, uh, fun, comfortable for me, noticeable. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of wear what I feel good in, and I have a very outgoing personality, so I kind of like to dress according to my moods, and I do. I always loved all the different fashions that did come out. I love the shift dresses. We call them sack dresses. <laughs> We'd been wearing sack dress all our lives because we were back in the country. Mom used to make our clothes out of feed sacks. So we joked and laughed when the, you know, that dress came out like we've been wearing that all our lives. So I played guitar all my life and I never could grow my nails really long and I always wanted pretty nails. And so when they started coming out with those acrylic nails, I was first on. I was doing a lot of my hair myself, back combing they called it then, came out. I was doing that back in high school. I was one of the few girls in high school that was having that big old bouffant hair. My daddy used to raise bees and some of those hairdos look like a beehive, so maybe I was influenced by that. <laughs> Look like a family of something could live under some of those hairdos. Oh, all the country singers, if you didn't have big hair, you weren't going to make it far. And you know that old expression, the higher the hair, the closer to God. We really believed that. <laughs> well, I love the idea of wigs and my hair, I love it to be bleached. And so when I would do all that bleaching and I would do all that teasing, my hair was just not in good condition, but I still wanted that look. So when hair pieces and falls, they called them, came out, I started wearing a little hair piece before I started wearing the wigs. And then when wigs started coming out where they were good enough for where you could really fix them, I thought I'd been set free because I just thought, well, I can have a hairdo of any kind anytime I want it. I've got a wig for every occasion. It's been more like a, you know, a handicap. <laughs> for me to wear, not a handicap. But anyhow, they've, they've just served me well through the years, and someday I'm gonna have my own line of wigs and hair pieces. Well, a lot of wonderful things started happening in the 70s. I started going out on my own. But I tell you, you'll notice through all the decades, I always had that big old hair. I would think that the 70s hairdos was like whipped cream curls, but these started having a little more length and a little more curl, a little more motion. Still big though. And my uh, hairdresser, Colleen Owens at the time, she was so big on doing those big hairdos. And it's like she thought that I was larger than life, so she tried to make my hair even bigger. My style back then was uh, gaudy but flowy. I loved all, all of the stuff that kind of moved around and that was back during the time when I was a little heavier too. So a lot of my clothes I was wearing to hide a multitude of sins. When I move around I like things to move with me. I like to feel like I feel my space. So that's why I kind of like flowy things and big sleeves and big arms and like I'm in a flyway. A lot of those are like show clothes and I love sparkles and shine and color. But I didn't actually get into the rhinestones and the frills as far as uh, as an entertainer until I started with the Porter Wagner show. Porter used to wear all these beaded nudie suits and a woman named Rose Maddox that worked with her brothers, they wore all these beautiful rhinestone clothes and I thought, I want some rhinestones and I want them forever. The lines in one of my songs, it's hard to be a diamond in a rhinestone world, but you can do it. I've done it and I love my shine and frills and I just love things that kind of draw your attention because I always wanted a lot of attention. In the 80s, uh, I think a lot of the wigs were really, really those little tight curls. And the smaller I got, the bigger the hair seemed to be. So my husband used to say, you look like a Q-tip. <laughs> I was like a little stick with all this hair. I started working a little more with real designers. 
people that really knew what they were doing, and I'd really never had all that before. So I was beginning to get into better line of clothes, better song clothes, more glamorous clothes, more fashionable clothes, if you will, like for big award shows. I guess I was beginning to kind of get a little more glamorous. Well, I get a lot of my shoes made because I couldn't find shoes that high in the stores. And then if I did, they'd hurt my feet. I think the first time that I had custom shoes made was, I think, when I did the Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. I think before that, we were still kind of buying off of the shell. After you walk in shoes that are really made for your own feet, it's amazing and expensive, but it's worth it. <laughs> Well, I think the 90s kind of show how I was trying to be a little more glamorous. I was working with professional people. I was working with Tony Chase and uh, Robert. I was working with Steve Summers and people that really knew what they were doing, coming up with all these glamorous clothes. And Cheryl Riddle, who was my hairdresser at the time, she started studying hairdos that were fashionable and she was applying those to my personality dolly eyes in them, as they say, same with the clothes. But I felt like during that time, I was the probably the most fashionable that I had ever been, as far as a little more classy with, with the hair, a little more classy with the clothes, and uh, really trying to be a little more refined, because they said I was beginning to be a, a well-to-do businesswoman. <laughs> But I was still just a little old dolly. When you got into all those different things like that with animal prints and all that, that was the designer. They watch the trends too or what's, you know, what's hot, you know, this year. And so they kind of try to incorporate that and, and dollyize it as much as they can. Because so much of that kind of stuff, because I'm so little, just kind of overwhelms me. So you kind of have to be careful how you do a lot of prints or a lot of bold things because I'm better not to have a whole bunch of that because there's just not a whole bunch of me except right here and right here. <laughs> In the 2000s, <laughs> I was trying to look a little more fashionable. As you get older, you try to find the most flattering hairdos, you try to wear the most flattering clothes. You gotta hide this now. So I think that's true with anybody, even if you're young or old, there are certain things about your body that just changes. So you just have to go with that. And that's the same with your makeup. That's the same with your hair. Uh, like I say, I basically stayed the same with that, but I do have to uh, kind of use more caulk and putty these days in my makeup. <laughs> And I have to kind of be, you know, make sure that, you know, if my hair don't, you know, just, you know, if I'm slanting here or slanting there, I have to kind of make the hair do that. So you just kind of have to look at all your faults and try to make them as positive as you can. I'm the kind of person that I like a lot of makeup, daytime or nighttime. And I like colors. And a lot of people say, oh, don't wear blue eyeshadow. I said, but I like blue eyeshadow. I don't care if it's fashionable. They say, don't buy a blue car. I like blue cars too. Blue's blue. I love blue. Well, I think my style today is a combination of all those things back through the years. As I mentioned before, even with clothes, we still look back through some of those clothes, the designers that work with me, and they say, you know, that really was a flattering look on you, or that really looked good here, there. Same with, with my hair. We go back to those old things and, and, and just pick out the best elements and just kind of incorporate that into what's new and modern. I still, you know, I have the hair that's not as wild or as crazy, but still big. <laughs> and if I don't like it, it's just like the wigs. I'll change it. It's still me, and it's mine. And like I say, I'd like to think that I, I might be artificial, but I'm real where it counts, right here in my heart. And I'm so happy that I get to share all these things and this insight with people about myself and, and about my look and why I am the way I am and who I am. So I think that's important. There's a lot of people out there that don't have the money to buy all those clothes they see on TV and in a catalog. You just do like me. Pick the best of all of it and make it fit you and you're a fashion star.